press the bell icon on YouTube app and never miss another update. Those moments uh, for me that um, that is a dream come true. I grew up here, um, got opportunity. I remember sitting on the floor um, when I could sit Indian style uh, and watch the Chicago Bulls won their first championship. I was nine years old. I remember looking at it and saying, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to be. Beginning of this year, oh. would you have thought you would have been a Chicago Bull no. by the end of the season? No. I didn't, I didn't think at the end of the season. You know, this was not something that I was like, oh, I'm going to play the season, I'm going to go to Chicago. This is really something that came about and even when the process was already going, you know, when I was out there trying to figure out what I wanted to do. You said earlier today you were making it clear that it wasn't about money. Yeah. What is it about? It's one about what I want to do. You know, having the power to do what I want to do. Having the power to do what I want to do. To have the power to control your own destiny. It's something that Something amazing about that feeling. We begin with breaking news. A woman shot in the head outside of a Chicago elementary school on the south side. CBS 2's Dorothy Tucker is live outside that school in Washington Park. Dorothy. Where Erica, the police are still here on the scene. We're still gathering information, but we are told that the 32 year old mother was shot right outside of Dulles Elementary School, which is here in the corner of 63rd and Calumet. Now, police say it happened around 3 30 this afternoon. The woman was walking by the school pushing a stroller. She was walking with a man, and police say two men walked up to them and started shooting at the man. But the 32 year old woman was hit in the head in the arm. The shooters, according to police, ran inside a nearby store. Friends say that relatives took the baby when the mother was rushed to the hospital. We just know she has four children and she just moved in this area possibly about four months ago. She moved in this area and, and, and I mean it's just devastating right now so we don't have any uh, we don't know what's going on right now. The family is at the hospital. Now, the woman was taken to Stroger Hospital. Police tell us that she has since passed away. Police still here investigating. 32-year-old Nakia Aldridge's connection with her famous cousin, Dwayne Wade, was a source of pride. She posted this family picture with hip-hop artist Common on her Facebook page from the NBA star's birthday party at his mom's Chicago home. But Friday, she was the one making headlines as one of Chicago's latest victims of gun violence. Police say the mother of four was pushing a stroller, walking to register her children at school Friday afternoon when two men opened fire, hitting her in the head and arm. They say she was not the intended target, but an innocent bystander. The 2015 Porsche the young rapper was driving about four Sunday morning in Briarwood, Queens, still running hours after the 31-year-old star was shot six times before being ambushed in his car, along with a passenger who was shot once and is expected to survive. An aide to Governor Cuomo fighting for his life tonight after being caught in the crossfire of a shootout on the streets of Brooklyn. Tonight, police described 43-year-old Carrie Gabay as an innocent bystander walking on this sidewalk with hundreds of other people when as many as three gunmen opened fire. It happened during the overnight partying leading up to the West Indian American Day Parade. Gunfire outside the Ebbets Field Houses in Crown Heights. Carrie Gabay, an aide to Governor Cuomo, shot in the head. The NYPD says Gabay was walking with his brother along Bedford Avenue between Sullivan and Montgomery Streets when suspected gang members started spraying gunfire. At least 16 shots. Investigators say one gunman was shooting from the street, a second fired from the Ebbets field patio and Gabay was caught in the crossfire. 
Governor Cuomo's first deputy counsel was walking behind a float when in a split second, things changed. Get he was down. They, they shot they shot in the scrimmage. They all was down. He shot when he was down. Get he was point. down. They, they shot they shot in the scrimmage. They all was down. He shot when he was down. They, they shot, they shot in the scrimmage. They all was down. He shot when he was down. Kevin was there right with Kari when his best friend was hit in the head with a stray bullet. Authorities say the 43-year-old was caught in the crossfire, a gunfight. Police say the mother of four was pushing a stroller, walking to register her children at school Friday afternoon when two men opened fire, hitting her in the head and arm. They say she was not the intended target, but an innocent bystander. Hours later, Wade tweeted, my cousin was killed today in Chicago. Another act of senseless gun violence. Four kids lost their mom for no reason. Unreal. Hashtag enough is enough. My exclusive interview with Dwayne Wade. Uh, one week ago, his first cousin, Nikea Aldridge, a young mother, was killed in crossfire on the streets of Chicago. It has been the deadliest month in Chicago in two decades. And Wade, who is returning to the Bulls for the fall, spoke about how that community can come together and ha his family's personal tragedy. And ha his family's personal tragedy. Let me just start out by expressing our condolences. For your loss, I think it's so hard for people to believe your cousin, Nike Aldridge, walking down the street, pushing her baby in a stroller, signing up for kids, her kids for school, and she gets shot. It must have been shocking. Yeah, um, and just hearing it again, it's tough. Um, it, it was, I think, uh, for our family, uh, it was very tough. You know, so just the headlines alone. You know, mother walking down the street, you know, registering our kids in school. A mother of four, you know, get, gets murdered. Uh, it's tough to deal with it. Yeah, she was doing all the right things. And it's kind of one of those moments, you know, for our family that it's like, this is not real. My cousin and kid, she was, I always say she was like the, the quiet one. You know, she would just be there. She would be about her kids. She would be about her family. But you never would know she's in a room. And uh, it was shocking. It was shocking to hear... Um, not only that she was murdered, but it was shocking to hear the way and, and how. Her mother, uh, my auntie, my mother, uh, the family is, you know, is tore up. Your family so devastated by all this. And on that weekend alone in the city of Chicago, 10 more people killed, 57 shot. Yeah. I mean, the town you're going back to is having a hard time. You know, we're coming off of doing the town hall meeting. Right, there um, from Dwayne. right with the ESPN just the night before. Literally the night yeah. before. It's important for all of us um, to, to, to help each other, to go back and say, you know what, where did this start at? How did this start? And let's see how we can change there. We're using our voice. We're using our platform to try to shed some light on the city of Chicago. And then hours later, um, you know, one of my family members is killed. Two arrests have been made in Chicago for the murder of Dwayne Wade's cousin. 22-year-old Darren Sorrells is a member of a local gang, the Gangster's Disciples. His older brother, Darwin, was previously in prison on a gun charge, but was let out early. He's considered a co-conspirator. Both men were on parole. 22-year-old Darren Sorrells is a member of a local gang, the Gangster's Disciples. New since 5 o'clock, we have new videos showing one of 32 suspected gang members arrested across the metro area. A former DeKalb County police officer was also arrested in the raids today. Channel 2's Richard Elliott is live in DeKalb with how investigators say that officer bragged Richard that he was a hitman. 
uh, in this indictment. This indictment doesn't just cover things in DeKalb County. FBI conducted raids in Cobb and Paulding. Also involves investigations in Valdosta, in Macon, and the city of Atlanta. But DeKalb's police chief told me he's disappointed. It also involves one of his now former officers. This is a photo of now former DeKalb County police officer Vancito Gums now facing charges of being part of a vast criminal conspiracy involving the notorious street gang, the Gangster Disciples. Um, I was saddened and, and disappointed to find out that one of our former officers um, was one of the members that was indicted. DeKalb's police chief James Conroy talked with me and says Gums resigned last October after investigators say he lied to them about his involvement in using some illegal drugs. So as we were preparing to terminate him for that, he went ahead and resigned and, and left before the investigation was completed. Only Channel 2 was there as the FBI raided a Marietta apartment complex as they picked up 30 of 32 alleged gang members. The U.S. Attorney's Office says the gangster disciples use charitable organizations as fronts for their illegal activity. The U.S. Attorney's Office says the gangster disciples use charitable organizations as fronts for their illegal activity. And according to the indictment, Vancito Gums bragged that he was a hitman for the organization. We're going to get good, yeah. No, where was I before I just sneezed my fucking brains out? So, those the gangster sets. Now, I think I told you before how Minister Fontaine and Larry Hoover got cool when they was in jail. So, um, Minister Fontaine brought the idea to David. And um, King David Barksdale, he liked the idea of clicking up all the sets in the Inglewood area. In most of the South Side, to make the Black Gangster Disciples, David through this meeting, and this was the most important meetings of all, and this would make one of the the strongest brotherhoods ever known in gang history. Now, this is when it gets good. Now, the meeting was on 64th in Halsted. Now, for you to know the area, you like, yo, that's Kennedy King College. Now, I'm finna blow your fucking mind with some real history. Now, um, this is coming out of Gordon's mouth. So, Gordon tells me, you know what Kennedy King got, right? And I said, yeah, I know what Kennedy King got. So, he says, it's a field across the street. I know, I know the field. And it's a building right there. And in that building is where we had our first meeting. So I'm like, where? No, that's cool. What's special about the building? He showed me his ring. So I didn't pay no attention. I just looked at the ring like, get that finger out of my face, nigga. I want to see that shit. So I dipped. Now I went to go check the building out because I used to go to school at Kennedy King because I was um, I was going to take a GD course, but I got sidetracked, you should say. And um, it was a Masonic temple. The building, like, it haven't been touched in 20 years. Like, it's so old. It looks fucking raggedy, man. This is it's, it's a big building. I mean, you can tell it got the old brick in it. When you look inside, you can't see shit. Like, it's going to, the building looks totally deserted. It's spooky. I went back and talked to him. Like, yo, I went to it. Man, I think it's a Masonic temple. Then he showed me the ring again. He said, yeah, that's what it was. That's what it still is. Now, he's a mason. Okay. Now, he tells me the rest of the story. So we had a meeting here, and I'm like, hold on. So how did the black gangster disciples get get to rent the building for the night? Like, who rents a a building to different gangs? Now you gotta remember, David was his name hold weight. You know what I'm saying? He was the king of all kings. You understand? Larry Hoover, the chairman of the board. Yeah, I'm familiar. I'm, I know you're familiar with the power Larry Hoover holds to today. So it, it just always got me like, what happened? So I ended up asking him, was King David and Larry Hoover Masons at that age? And he gave me a smirk. He gave me the craziest look. He, he like a giggle, you know what I'm saying? And he never answered. That was the end of the conversation. That's all he told me. You know what I'm saying? He told me stories, how they fought, 
I used to rumble. They didn't use guns. If you did have a gun, they didn't have to use it. You know what I'm saying? A bunch of shit that niggas know. You know what I'm saying? We know what happened back then. But I just could not understand what was going on. And then I look at a lot of the symbols with the gang, as far as disciples and the people. And a lot of them comes from the Mason Doctrine. And um, it, it really gets me <laughs> some of the laws is in the Mason's rule book. <laughs> so, I mean... I mean, it's good enough to say that BGD was started by Freemasons. I want to say to the brothers behind me and to the brothers out there in the YouTube world, you know what I'm saying, from Freedom Lodge number one, Grandmaster Otten Ray. This is when it gets good. Now, the meeting was on 64th in Hostet. 64th in Hostet. Still here on the scene. We're still gathering information, but we are told that the 32-year-old mother was shot right outside of Dulles Elementary School, which is here in the corner of 63rd in Calumet. Now, for you to know the area, you like, yo, that's Kennedy King College. Now, I'm finna blow your fucking mind with some real history. Now, um, this coming out of Gordon's mouth. So, Gordon tells me, you know what Kennedy King at, right? And I said, yeah, I know what Kennedy King at. So, he says, it's a field across the street. I know, I know the field. And it's a building right there. And in that building is where we had our first meeting. And um, it was a Masonic temple. I really think now that you know my purpose for being back in the city is bigger than basketball, which basketball is a big part of it, of course. This is what I do for a living. But I think my purpose at the end of the day is hopefully, you know, to come to Chicago and be a part um, and be the voice that can help um, bring people together. Good luck with that, and thank you. I appreciate it. Is that so much uh, of what we have seen in movies and television are symbols? Are you aware that um, that I have been talking to some doctors in Los Angeles who have been doing some research on this, and I find it to be absolutely fascinating that many of the gangs, the uh, Latino and the black gangs in the major cities across America, their graffiti that they are spraying on uh, buildings, their graffiti are actually Masonic emblems and Masonic seals and symbols. And I have seen a whole collection that these doctors have, these are medical doctors, but they are interested in this subject. And they have been collecting hundreds of pictures of uh, graffiti and showing the research into the ancient secret societies. And there's no way that these black and Latino gangs can know these symbols. There, the, there's definitely a connection between the gangs and some sort of a higher orchestrated mind behind the warfare going on between gangs. I don't think those gangs are by chance. I think that they have been nurtured and orchestrated and, and promoted and even financed. I mean, if you think about it, how uh, those gangs have money to travel around they can buy guns they can they can roam around they don't have to work where are they getting their money from well not only that but their main occupation is is the uh, narcotics business of and, and fomenting uh, chaos confusion and fear right and uh, they haven't they haven't got the background of understanding learning 
uh, uh, to put together the kind of logistics network that it would take to supply this kind of an enterprise. Absolutely. So someone with an awful lot of money, an awful lot of organization, an absolute ability to provide 100% protection is supplying these city gangs, this is not the mafia. You can bet on it. You can bet <laughs> this on. is a very sophisticated, uh, a totally protected organization. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, the San Francisco Chronicle had a, two full pages in one of their newspapers I still have where they were talking about how the uh, this federal government was bringing in narcotics from Asia during the Vietnam War in the bodies of American servicemen that That's was being killed in Vietnam and they were bringing in bags of pure heroin and pure narcotics from Asia in the bodies of American servicemen and what were they doing with it? They were, they were giving it directly to the Mafia because the Mafia is doing uh, a little tricks for the government. It takes care of business for the government so they have to be paid. Well, let, let's clarify one thing here. It's not the government. It, no, is, it, is, it is these the secret societies who are operating behind our government. That's correct. And this explains the close cooperation between, between government and the Mafia. That is right. It's going to become quite obvious to anyone who looks into anything I say. I challenge you. As a matter of fact, I will give $10,000 to anyone who can prove these connections wrong, the key points in this video wrong. That's how sure I am. And I'm not a rich person. I know this beyond any doubt. The first brain dead obvious connection is sports. Okay, Sugar Sugar Ray Robinson on record Freemason. No Freemason denies it. Nobody denies it. Shaquille O'Neal on record Freemason. No Freemason denies it. Nobody denies it. Okay. Now in all these sports, you know you have gang members. Boxing. Some people who are boxers are gang members. Maybe not the top boxers, maybe not the most famous boxers, but gang members include box boxers include boxing includes gang members. Basketball includes gang members. Some of you, I, I don't know why you wouldn't understand that, but and um, football includes gang members and thugs. You know, just recently in the news, this guy Aaron Hernandez just got found guilty of murder, and he had done several shootings in the past. I'd be very surprised if he wasn't a gang member, though I don't know what gang he's from. But blatantly, there's gang members in, in the NFL, former NFL, etc. Okay? Blatant connection um, to masonry and gangs. Okay? Whether it's a direct connection, a gang member who's a mason, who's in, who plays professional sports, or whether it's an indirect connection, the, the teammate of a Freemason in professional sports. There's a connection, and it's a pretty solid one. Now, for to me, the more dramatic connection is what I'm about to explain to you. First, let me read answer a question that was given to me by a fellow targeted individual uh, individual she says it seems like they're also the real leaders of street gangs these days do you agree I said yes either that or they collaborate with them referring to the leaders to get someone friendly to their cause and power the Mexican Mafia is one of the most powerful criminal groups that controls all Serenio gangs and MS-13 gangs for the most part in the country is modeled after the Italian Mafia the Italian Mafia is known for collaborating with Jewish gangsters uh, the CIA, the military, Freemasons, and so on. The Mexican Mafia admits it is modeled after them, and I have seen them working with mental health to run psychops on people, including myself. Same thing with biker gangs, occult symbolism, um, Hell's Angels, for example, etc. And some of them are Jewish. Then Jews were the main group of people who started communism, and the Black Gorilla family is communist for the most part and the Nortenials tend to have communist ideologies and leanings. The structure of control starts in the prison gangs who tend to control the street gangs. I could go on forever about the gangsta disciples in Chicago using their symbolism and all other major Chicago gangs which is the other place besides California that gang banging really started. You know and it's really hard for some people to swallow that people involved in a great conspiracy that controls society um, would do time in prison. You know, that, that is hard for people to swallow. Well, look at the, um, I believe it was the, the five families, the heads of the five families of the mafia. I believe they're in jail right now. Um, a couple years ago, there was the Gambino family indictment. I think it was 80 something Gambino family members. You know, it is not uncommon or out of the ordinary for members of the conspiracy, especially the more criminal members to do time in prison. Not uncommon at all. They tend to have it easy in prison. They tend to get 
women and drugs and the things they want a lot easier than other people in prison. And I shouldn't have to explain that why that is. The Jews are some of the main people in the Freemasonic conspiracy. You know, the Illuminati, um, the Rothschilds, especially. And then you have other people, you know, Zuckerberg, um, uh, Zimmerman, excuse me, Zuckerman. You'll see that they're Jews are strategically located and there's no way that they're not in on the conspiracy. It's literally impossible. The powerful Jews, the secret society Jews, especially the Zionist Jews. You know, it's, it's about having us compartmentalized, turning us against each other so we don't have power. You know, if they just controlled us all together and there wasn't movements that didn't get along, then there would be a very high likelihood that we would unite against them, which is their worst nightmare. You know, there's about six million Masons is what they claim in the world, right? And there's, what, seven, eight billion people? So, you know, they're, they're walking on thin ice in one, in, if you look at it from one aspect. But in another way, they collaborate with a lot of people. A lot of people are under control. They're the heads of the movements. The movements that you would expect to go against them, they control. But ultimately, this is controlled opposition. We're looking at all controlled opposition. Gang members and prison gangs are controlled, quote-unquote, opposition. Okay? That's what we have here. Unholy alliance of vested interest, controlled opposition, we're compartmentalized, and Illuminati symbols, devils, you know, hawks and eagles and uh, snakes and, you know, uh, dragons, you know, Illuminati symbols. There hasn't, there hasn't one major gang in America that doesn't use Illuminati symbolism.
what my story showed was that the cocaine that was being sold in those neighborhoods uh, was coming from mainly one source and this one source was being used to finance a guerrilla war in, in Central America. The general idea of the CIA dealing drugs um, was something that the American mainstream press had never written about before and that's why it prompted outrage among blacks, among drug reform activists, among uh, politicians, by the CIA, by every federal agency involved in the drug war, because it showed they weren't doing their jobs, that it, it was a fraud. I think all the gangs were heavy players in the drug trades because the cocaine explosion caused so much product to be out on the streets in Chicago. These traffickers needed somebody to move it, so naturally they turned to the gangs. As the 1980s dawned, the gang began branching out into Chicago's poor neighborhoods, spreading its brand of capitalism. Uh, those same areas, you know, where they lack economic stimulus. While some members got legitimate jobs, the rest sold drugs. For the most part, that is what keeps them together, is the drug business. The Satan Disciples created a structure to control the flow of money. Cash flowed from street dealers to the set bosses, eventually all the way up to the king. Once you sell narcotics, yes, you're going to be making money for yourself, but also you're going to have to pitch some back in. You're going to have to pay something back to, to the king. The temptation of the beat You slip and lose your grip And forever fall asleep The venom is contagious Be wary of its spell What you thought would be heaven Turns out to be hell I wonder if she knows The devil's taking off her clothes Deep into her soul Stole now he's in control Papa's doing work A victim of the deadly curse Wouldn't be the first To leave the ghetto in a hearse Oh and how it hurts The children pay the biggest price Never gets the chance To grow up with a happy life Blame it on the rock But we know that's a bunch of crap Someone from the top Supplying us with plenty cry, keep them in a day. Don't let them see the other way, let them all get paid. Won't live to see another day. See, they never got a breath for the sunshine. Now the kids addicted and only hit it one time. We're destined to be dead as a nation. Don't let it come to this. Resist the temptation. Today, I'm going to fill you in on the connections between the Illuminati and your local street gangs. All right, yo. So me and Rat grew up poor as fuck, right? And, you know, hanging out in the streets and shit, you get mixed up with the quote-unquote wrong crowd or whatever, you know, and, you know, we got into gangbanging and shit, and, you know, we used to hang out with Sureño Treses and a bunch of crip niggas and shit, and so, I know a little bit about gangbanging, right, and now I got older, and, you know, I'm, I'm wiser now, and I've been looking around and stuff, and I started investigating the New World Order and the Illuminati, and, I gotta tell you, man, there's some strong similarities between the two. It almost makes me think that the Illuminati runs the gang system of America. So let's start off with initiation. Here we have a couple pics of a Skull and Bones initiation. And here we have some Freemasonic initiation. And here we have some gang initiations. get initiated in both secret societies and in the gangs you gotta you know come in at the bottom of the pyramid you gotta do your dirt you gotta put in work you gotta pay your dues and you work your way up the pyramid right you start out in you know what I'm saying you start out on the streets as a YG and you get jumped in and you do you know what I'm saying? You respect your OGs and you do what they tell you to do and and you prove that you're down and you move up in the ranks and you become a G. And then you're a G for a couple of years and you, you put in some more work and you do what you know, you're know you supposed to do and then you become an OG and then nobody in the gang can fuck with you. And it works the same way with secret societies. Alright, so speaking of degrees, let's talk about the two main branches of Freemasonry. The York Rite which we can see here 
has 13 degrees or 13 steps or 13 levels and the Scottish Rite as we can see here has 33 degrees. This is very interesting because two of the main Hispanic gangs uh, Mara Salvatrucha or MS-13 and Sureño Trece both have 13 as their signifying number and Trey Trey Crips, one of the bigger Crip gangs, uses 33 as its signifying number. So in other words, three of the most predominant gangs out there all use numbers sacred in Freemasonry as their identifying numbers. Alright, let's move on to hand signs. Everybody's seen, you know what I'm saying, rap videos or the gangster movies. Everybody knows what gang signs are. Everybody's been you know it's so popular now even when you got white chicks throwing up gang signs on the internet now so um yeah basically the Illuminati got hand signs too you can see some Freemasons doing their hand signs right here and you can see George Bush throwing up his devil horns or you know his hook'em horns cause he's from Texas or whatever real big Texan he ain't even from Texas but whatever but you know, why the fuck is Bill Clinton throwing it up? Or why the fuck is Dan Quayle throwing it up? Or other world leaders? You know what I'm saying? These people aren't from Texas. Why are these people throwing up the hook'em horns? Speaking of the devil horns, as you can see here, the Latin Kings, another really big street gang, they use the devil horns to signify their gang. Also, they use the crown which anybody who studies the Illuminati knows that the crown represents the sun or its sun worship. Yeah. And what do we have here? It's a few people you might recognize doing a Masonic handshake. Alright, this is some shit from Folk Nation, one of the larger Crip gangs. And as you can see, they tend to use the Star of David that the Zionists are associated with. And if you look at this picture, you can see the Star of David, a pitchfork, a backward swastika, and if you look closely, you'll see three hidden sixes in there as well. And what about biker gangs? Biker gangs use a lot of the same symbolism of the Illuminati too. Take a look at this. The skull and bones. Have you not seen this on many bikers jackets? Or what about this? It's the cross of the Knights of Malta, a secret society that hardly anybody even talks about. And you see it everywhere in biker culture, even on West Coast choppers. Okay, so if my theory is correct and the Illuminati created or helped, you know, steer along the path that the gang movement went down, how would this be possible? Well, let's take a look at it. Most of the street gangs work for or underneath the bigger crime families, like Sureño Trece pretty much does all of the dirty work that Lyme needs to get done, you know what I'm saying? So, and I'm sure this works with a lot of the other street gangs as well. They're either working for or they're emulating what the bigger crime families are doing. So, Let's look at the big crime families. Well, this is where it gets deep. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't want to touch this, but what are most of the bigger crime families? What are most of the Sicilian crime families? What are most of the Hispanic or the Mexican mafia crime families? What are most of the Italian crime families? They're all Roman Catholic. And if you've done any kind of real investigation into this, you can't turn a blind eye to the Vatican. You know that the Vatican has a huge role in the Illuminati. For God's sake, they invented the fucking Illuminati. Adam, Adam Weissop was a Jesuit priest. He's the one that pulled all of the families together in Europe and created the idea of the Illuminati. So... Basically, that's how I think it happened. The Roman Catholic Church working through the crime families, working through the street gangs, 
They flooded the streets with guns. They flooded the streets with drugs through the CIA and through other organizations to create problems, you know what I'm saying, to create chaos. You flood the streets with guns and crack and you set up a situation where the problem, the poor people, the worthless or, you know what I'm saying, the, uh, the useless eaters, you know, they eliminate themselves. They get themselves locked in the private prisons for profit where they work making Adidas and New Balance shoes for 32 cents a day and 16 cents of that, 32 cents, goes to pay restitution and, you know what I'm saying, then you got everybody out there killing themselves, killing each other and basically they take a movement that like the Black Panthers started where they were trying to empower people and basically they turn it into something where we're just killing ourselves, we're killing each other, we're killing our brothers and our sisters and we're doing it without any thought because we're told that that's the way life is and we just accept it just like everybody else does.